I want to clarify a few things when we're talking about limits algebraically. So remember, we can look at a limit, we can look at the graph and see what the graph is doing and find the limit that way, or we can find the limit with algebra. When we find the limit with algebra, we just have a function and we have to figure out what the limit is. So always, first and foremost, when you have a limit and you're trying to find it with algebra, you do direct substitution. That means you take the number that you're trying to find the limit at and you just plug it in. Always do that first. When you plug this in, one of four things is going to happen. Okay, So one of these four instances is going to happen. Apparently I can't count. That would be three, not four. Okay. First, when you plug the number in, you might just get out a number. If you get a number out, that's, that's your limit, right? Because what that means is that this function is continuous, right? When you plug a number in and you get a number out, awesome, the function is continuous at that point. The function exists at that point. The limits on both sides exist, which means that's it. You're done. So if you get out a number, you're done. That's your limit. Sometimes you're going to get out a zero over a number. Okay, I'm just going to put a K there because to remind you that that's okay. It's okay to have a zero over a number because what is zero divided by any number? It's just zero. So these two instances, when you do direct substitution and you get either one of these instances, you're totally done. That's it. You don't have to do any more because your limit is either a number or it's zero, which is also a number, right? Okay, the other two instances you might get, you might get a number over zero, or you might get zero over zero. These are your four possible things that you're going to see. Now what happens, let's go over here to when you get zero over zero. When you get zero over zero, that means there's a hole in the graph, okay? And when there's a hole in the graph, we need to simplify to get rid of that hole, okay? So this means there's a hole. So you have to simplify to get rid of the hole, okay? If I can get this to write. So that's when you're going to use algebra to simplify, get rid of the hole. What does this mean when you get a number over zero? That means you have an asymptote. And if you have an asymptote, there's no simplification that's going to get rid of that asymptote. That asymptote's always going to be there, right? So that's when you do sign analysis to figure out what's going on at that asymptote. Because what you're trying to figure out is at the asymptote, is the function going like this, right? Or is the function going like this? So we do the sign analysis to figure out if we're going to positive infinity, negative infinity, or whether we're going to both, okay? So, four options. The first option is you plug in with direct substitution, you get a number, everything is fine, you're done, that's your limit. Second option, you get zero over a number, that's also fine, your limit is zero. Third option, you get a number over zero. That means you have an asymptote, and there is no simplification that's going to get rid of it, so you have to do sign analysis to figure out where that asymptote is going, whether it's going up, whether it's going down, whether it's going opposite, whether it's like an odd asymptote. The fourth option is you get a zero over zero, which is the indeterminate form, and that means you have a hole. You need to simplify to get rid of that hole. Hope that clears up a little bit of how to do limits algebraically.